Lamar Aismo video, the most shadow band man in the land. This one is uh, impromptu. As you can see, I'm in Slavelandia. And uh, still a lot of hype about the coronavirus. Um, unfortunately, I think uh, Donald Trump's test came back negative. I was hoping that he caught it and did us all a favor and died. But um, unfortunately, it doesn't look like he has it. But um, apparently, it's it's from my last update on this topic, it hit a, it's hitting Iran uh, even more. China has it under control, even though they're the, the origin uh, of the virus. And uh, so according to the mainstream media, uh, I, I, you know, I don't put anything past these intelligence services, uh, especially when it comes to our country, um, United Kingdom and uh, Israel. They'll, they'll do any and everything. Uh, uh, the most diabolical and depraved acts are not off limits. Uh, when it comes to trying to maintain their grip on power. But people are panic buying stuff. You know, you go to the grocery store, you can't get bathroom tissue, uh, canned goods. I mean, I went today and like almost everything, uh, the, the, most of the tomato sauce was gone. Like, I mean, it's just ridiculous. People are panicking. And apparently the virus is really only dangerous to uh, older people or people who already have compromised immune systems. Supposedly, the virus has already been circulating since the 17th of November, and people have been you know, going to and from China and other infected areas. So there's no way they could keep a lid on the or contain the virus unless they find an epicenter like they did in Wuhan, China. Apparently, New Rochelle, which is a city uh, 25 miles away from Manhattan, they're actually trying to do some quarantine type measures there. But unless you find a big cluster or you're near one of these big clusters, I don't think panic buying is appropriate. But, you know, people, you know, I, I don't understand the panic buying. But a few issues come to play when it comes to this virus. You have the whole... Um, aspect of supposedly the Chinese people are eating these uh, endangered uh, animals and um, I forget the name of it but it looks like an armadillo so I'm, I'm, I'm sick this is one of the things that uh, my prior video when I said that if aliens of extraterrestrial aliens from another planet ever invaded I would be be helping them and, and also, if um, there's some sort of uh, AI that wants to, to, to you know, do away with a lot of people, I'd be helping that AI as well. And it, 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 I say that because, I mean, just look at this. You st Not only are endangered animals being eaten, but they're, they're, people kill, and especially in Asia. And that's not just limited to China, but you have this traditional medicine phenomenon where people think it's okay to you know, kill rhinos for their horns or, you know, elephants for their tusks. They they want to use tiger penis as an aphrodisiac when there's Viagra and Cialis available. It, it makes you really lose faith in humanity, but then you, you remember you don't go to the extreme like Uncle Tom's do or other people who blame entire groups of people for the, action, the actions of uh, some members of that group. So I'm pretty sure there are decent people throughout Asia that try to conserve uh, these endangered species, and they don't look at them as delicacies or uh, traditional medicine. But the unfortunate part is that there's still too many people who do. So hopefully this changes in the near future. There's another animal I know called the moon bear where they actually torture these animals by harvesting the bile from their stomach again, for traditional medicine's sake. I mean, it's just absurd stuff. And then hopefully sometime in the near future, humanity does things to uh, actually help preserve and protect the environment, especially endangered plant and animal species. That's just a, a PSA. I, I normally don't get into that uh, topic, but uh, environmentalism is something I want to touch on in the, in the distant future. 
because uh, I think it's another one of those topics uh, that we can all agree on in, in addition to putting a stop to people from uh, dangerous uh, religious cults like the tribe and um, evangelicals. Which brings me to uh, something, some good news. Uh, have a bit of good news to share. The uh, chief Sephardic rabbi, and I forget his name, but it's, it's not important. He's just as racist as his uh, predecessor. This guy actually called the uh, Israelis of Russian ancestry, he called them Goy. And that brings a smile to my face because it shows you that one of my theories that, that, I, that I believe in, I don't know if I've said it on the channel, I think I may have. I know out of all the hundreds of videos I've done, probably at least in one video, I mentioned the fact that if these groups, these, these uh, sinister families and the 1% of the 1% who control the world, if they, do, if they are ever successful at killing or enslaving a whole lot of us, I mean, and, and by enslaving, because they already have us by the balls in terms of the economy. You saw the, the stock market uh, made people lose their mind also. Uh, but besides wage slavery, if they ever were successful, they would have to start feeding on each other, which is what this chief Sephardic rabbi is showing us. And also the, the treatment of Ethiopian Jews uh, in Israel shows us that... Um, once they have no one else to pick on or to um, to leech off of or abuse, they'll have no choice but to turn on themselves. And um, again, this is a, a display of that. The chief Sephardic rabbi referring to his fellow tribesmen as goy is, uh, is, is a positive thing. Hopefully Israel comes to end fighting in a much more vicious manner to the point where they... Um, you know, it would be great if a scenario like uh, what they claim happened in Syria and Libya happened in Israel. They just have an all-out uh, war against themselves. That would, uh, you know, alleviate a lot of the suffering, especially in that region. And it would force the uh, not only their elites, but uh, the elites throughout the so-called West, throughout North America and Western Europe to pick sides as well. And they'll have less time to... Uh, bully, destroy, or um, reduce into poverty and servitude people in the Southern Hemisphere, as well as minority populations in their own countries. Well, excluding Europe, because the reality is for Europe, there, there should be no significant minority um, communities, in my view. And, and while I'm on that subject, ditto for Africa. I think it's not a mistake that um, God, or if you don't believe in God, of nature, nature wasn't mistaken in giving ethnic groups particular regions of the world and homelands. And, and um, it would be great if, if something similar could happen, but uh, the nature of things, uh, I don't think that's possible anymore. Um you know, the way they've uh, shifted populations around, especially in, in the Western Hemisphere here, I feel so sorry, especially for the um, native people in the, in the northern portion of this hemisphere. There's no way they could ever achieve anything like getting anything close to control of their original territory. So that's one of the, uh, the unfortunate realities, uh, especially for them that we have to deal with. But this is a good sign, so I hope that the Russian uh, uh, portion of the uh, Israeli population takes a uh, significant offense and they start infighting because um, the more time they spend uh, abusing each other, again, the less they'll have to abuse us. But um, additionally, this just shows us, too, that uh, once the 1% are done raping and pillaging the resources of the world, and if they marginalize us enough and reduce the global population, again, they'll either, because I look at it like this, you will have some form of um, equality if they get rid of the masses, the lower class masses, or um, marginalize us and reduce our population to the extent you would, you would end up with a, a, a population that is uh, affluent. 
they, they uh, enslave or destroy most of us because keep in mind, a lot of the jobs that we do now, won't, they're, they're going to disappear in the not too distant future. You're going to have automation of almost every sector of the economy. And these people have already called us useless eaters, the elites, the top 1%, or as our friend uh, Alex Jones calls them, the globalist folks. They had the nerve to call us useless eaters when we, when we were doing the necessary work, not only for ourselves, for our own uh, betterment, but for them to live like the parasites that they are. We were already doing the work for that. So imagine how they're going to feel about us once they have robots that could essentially do everything. It'll, it'll leave them with no other choice but to uh, give us, quote unquote, free stuff that conservatives love to complain about. Oh, and speaking of that, this uh, coronavirus is once again embarrassing the United States in terms of our health care system or lack thereof when you let a few uh, tribal uh, you know, elites and their and their buddies and their slaves, uh, you know, make a monopoly out of the healthcare industry, or to make an oligopoly out of it and drain our pockets and and tax us without giving us anything really. Um, it's just a yeah, more embarrassment for the United States. Um, and uh, that's not to mention our literacy rate, uh, education, healthcare, standard of living. But keep in mind, according to uh, the, the red elephants, the, the, you know, there's this uh, degenerate uh, here on YouTube with a channel called Red Elephants where at least. But, you know, I should be more kind to that guy because Alex Jones was just like him, essentially, except for he pretended as if he was a truther. But he was the first and the chief member of the truther industrial complex think that's pretty much all I want to say in this video. I try to keep these videos at uh, 13 minutes, uh, not only because I don't think that uh, YouTube will still allow me to upload a video beyond 15 minutes. I said I had to do an experiment pretty soon to see if I could get away with that. But um, yeah, it's just interesting, you know, and, and, and in addition to that factor, I also do these, keep these videos around 13 minutes out of respect for Dan Marino, the greatest quarterback to ever throw a football hats off and salute to him. But I think I'm going to conclude here. Uh, if you have any information about this or things that you feel that I should be touching on in terms of this coronavirus, I'm still going to be Sunday. I'm, I'm, I don't have to work in slave landia, so I will be starting uh, or continuing my effort to not only beat up on um, the fact that, you know, you'll hear our politicians say the United States is the world's last great hope, which uh, nothing could be further from the truth. But um, I'm also going to start uh, beating up on the uh, Catholics and Protestants and their subservience and bootlicking to the tribe. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. God willing, see you in the future video.